passion story, any one of them, I am struck by how much blame there is to go around. Many people contributed to the death of Jesus. Many voices and actors had something to do or to say, or perhaps they stood by doing or saying nothing. Responsibility was diffused and dispersed over many, many moving parts. A protest here, a change of heart there, a different action taken. Things might not have ended up as they did, and Jesus might not have died. What if Jesus had not gone to the Mount of Olives to Gethsemane that night? What if the disciples had not fallen asleep, but kept watch and warned Jesus of approaching harm? What if Peter had acclaimed Jesus, defended him, and refused to leave his side for a moment? What if Jesus' supporters among the religious leaders and he did have supporters who just heard about Joseph of Arimathea who did not agree to their plan. What if their voice and votes had prevailed? And what if Jesus had been acquitted of the charge of heresy? What if Pilate had followed both his instincts and the law and maybe his own moral compass? Which even before the separation of church and state made it highly desirable to avoid judging religious Disputes. What if Pilate had stuck to his guns after that third time he tried to release Jesus and let him go? What if Herod had decided to keep Jesus around for a while? Maybe even hold him hostage for ransom? Think of all the other ways this might have played out differently. So that leaves the crowd as the big what? In Luke's passion, the crowd is a separate group from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. The crowd just kind of appears, and who they are and how they got there is not known. But they pick up on the buzz that something's up, that there might be a crucifixion happening soon. But they are not stirred up by the religious forces. They are not put up to ask for Barabbas instead of Jesus. Perhaps a voice here and there in them, in that mob, wanted to see violence for violence's sake. Maybe a flogging and beating, and then we'll go home. Maybe death, and then we'll go home. So it really is the mob, the mob that bears the greatest responsibility in this tragedy. Words have become slogans and then chants. Calls for violence have become common and repeated until individual responsibility is lost to the crowd's moral vacuum. Controlling a mob is tricky business and stopping one is nearly impossible until it is out of control. So it is really the crowd that convicts Jesus and gets him killed. That is both the saddest and scariest part of Palm Sunday. It is the anger of faceless and feckless people who have God knows how many axes to grind, who are gathered together and churn their rage into something worse, and who arrive at the conclusion that the solution to their problems not lie not, lie not within their self-delusion and rage, but outside and beyond the group, who know, they say, who they are, and who are looking for someone to blame for just about everything. Crucify him, and then let's go home and forget about what we did and what happened. Those events, seemingly so long ago, have not been forgotten, at least not among faithful Christians. They have been recalled for centuries and centuries on this day, and again on Good Friday, but particularly on Palm Sunday. And as well they should, because senseless and needless death isn't confined just to those few hours in Jerusalem on that dark Friday. Senseless and needless death happens when people die as victims of gun violence, or overdose, or despair. 
senseless and needless violence, excuse me, senseless and needless death happens in war, when command breaks down, when civilians are killed just because they are ready targets. Senseless and needless death happens when we ignore the effects of poverty, or the lack of health care, or an equal opportunity, and lives are shortened because life's challenges become overwhelming. Senseless and needless death happens when truth is silenced, when justice is denied, when voices of compassion and reason are drowned out by lies and bigotry and racism and hate. Crucify him, and let's go home and forget about him. That's how Holy Week begins. It's not how it ends, but it's how it begins. And we enter into it again, knowing and yet not knowing, seeing and yet not seeing, believing and yet in some way not believing. Where will it all be? That is the mystery of faith. There is a cross in every Easter, but is there an Easter in every cross?